I do want to welcome uh, several distinguished guests with us this afternoon. We are honored to have with us uh, Dr. Eduardo Ochoa, Assistant Secretary of the Office of Post-Secondary Education in the U.S. Department of Education. Dr. Ochoa, would you stand and be recognized? I'd also like to welcome the members of the governing boards of CASE and the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching. Would the trustees of the two organizations who are with us please stand? And please join me in thanking them for their unwavering support of this program. For all of us at CASE, one of the great pleasures of this program is working with our colleagues at the Carnegie Foundation. In addition to helping us guide the development of the awards, the Carnegie Foundation underwrites a, a portion of the cost of administering this program. The foundation also provides a $5,000 monetary award to each of our national winners. Is that taxable income? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Most important, the foundation conducts the final round of judging that leads to the selection of the four national winners. Leading the team at Carnegie is Dr. Anthony Breik. Tony became the foundation's ninth president in 2008. He previously taught at Stanford University and the University of Chicago, where he helped found the Center for Urban School Improvement an institute that supports reform efforts in the Chicago public schools. Would you please join in welcoming Dr. Anthony Breich to the lectern. Tony. Thank you, John. It's such a treat to be here again. This is my, uh, my third time at BAT at this wonderful event. And I should probably stop right now and apologize in advance for the baseball references that will run through this talk. Um, you have to understand that for the last several weeks, no one in California began a conversation without the words, how about those giants? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Car now, Carnegie staff have a reputation for, for working long hours. But from about the middle of October until that final pitch in Arlington, Texas, it was almost impossible to find anyone at their desks at game time. For, for those of you who aren't baseball fans, uh, San Francisco's ragtag misfit team uh, took home the World Series after a 56-year dry spell. Yep, yep. And this, this definitely has been a feel-good event for many in the Bay Area who waited a long time for their hometown team to win the big one. And all I can say is for all of my old Chicago colleagues and any Illinoisans in the room, uh, it's the proverbial next year. Uh, wait till the next year for the Cubbies. Any rate, uh, today's luncheon uh, is also a feel-good event, but a much less surprising one. If you look at back at what these professors have been accomplishing, winning the U.S. Professor of the Year would seem like a foregone conclusion. They have won campus, state, and other national education awards, had scholarships created for them, written textbooks, presented keynotes at major conferences, designed laboratories, and brought funding and recognition to their respective institutions. They have changed students' lives, and ultimately through their students, cultivated the human capacities on which our nation's future rests. What's amazing is that they have accomplished all of this at a time when education, K-12 and post-secondary, faces extraordinary challenges. We want education to be more personalized. We want it to reach to higher standards for many more students, and we want all of this to become much more efficient at the same time in the way we use resources. Any one of these would be a huge undertaking. Advancing on all three aims at the same time is truly unprecedented. We hold extraordinary expectations today for our educational institutions. At a time when schools, colleges, and universities are confronting a decline in public support and private endowments. The professoriate is under stress. A 2008 study showed that only 35% of 
of university faculty now hold tenure positions. The large majority of faculty in our colleges and universities have minimal benefits and are teaching more courses with little job security. And faculty are challenged by a new generation of students reared in a Web 2.0 environment with instant access 24-7. Pedagogies and curricula now must compete with the mashed up online learning and entertainment environments that have become the air and water of our students' lives. Likewise, faculty are taking up the mantle of advancing educational equity in our society. More diverse students are now coming to college, and some remain on the other side of the technology divide with little access to the educational and technological benefits afforded other classmates. Faculty know that all students deserve the benefit of a good education and press on despite the times. Our winners this year deliver on this and much more. Their real, challenge, their real challenges are the voices within, the professor's own expectations for excellence. And this is where our US Professors of the Year hit the ball out of the park. They are not sages on the stage. These educators are knowledge builders contributing uh, to their respective fields, are committed to inquiry in their own teaching, are comfortable with ambiguity of the classroom, and are nimble, changing course as, as they approach and push on deeper learning for their students. They aren't afraid to take risks and are willing to grow and learn alongside their students. They model by how they teach. They also educate for citizenship through their contributions outside the classrooms in their respective communities. They are coaches and mentors drawing students into their research as colleagues. They are border crossers seeking to educate when and wherever possible. No more bulimic learning, wrote one of the winners, explaining how his students probe complex questions and reflect on their own strategies for learning. I don't do cookbook labs, those with a well-defined recipe and a predestined outcome, wrote another. I encourage students to explore new solutions and delight when they do so. One nominator put it well when he said about one of our honorees that he understands that students must discover the process of engaged and active learning, the rewards of inquiry, the value of reasoned discourse, the delight of intellectual curiosity, and an earned respect for the processes of questioning knowledge. This is time consuming risky, and ultimately, deeply intellectual work. We know these four, and all of our state winners, whom we also honor today, are certainly not in it for the money. They are in it, in it for the glory, although I do hope they enjoy our celebration today. Um, they're in it, as one of the winners wrote, for the passion, because they can't imagine not being in the classroom. I'm a, a big fan of Atul Gawande, whose work and writings in health services improvement I have found truly inspirational. His comments to a graduating class of medical school students about their work ahead captures what our professors of the year now do every day. It will take art, said Gawande. It will take innovation. It will take ambition. And it will take humility. But the fantastic thing is that is what you get to do every day. And we and their students are all the better for it. Congratulations to all of you. <laughs>